Welcome and welcome back to another tutorial. So, if you have watched any of our tutorials before, you will know that on occasion I use Sketchbook Pro for my artwork. And I thought it'd be probably wise if I went through a quick Sketchbook Pro introduction, sort of a 101, you know, cover the basics. So in this tutorial, what I'm going to do is look at some of the features in the sketchbook that I think really set sketchbook apart from some of the other competition to make it a really, really good product. And, you know, the reason why I use it is mainly for some of the tools, make some of my artwork look a bit better, and it, you know, it's fast, it's quick, and it's fairly easy. It's got a really nice UI. So let's start, shall we? So... Over on the right hand side is our layer panel. So layers work just like any of the layers in any of the software. By default, I don't think your layer panel will be on. Um, so up in the top right over here, you can press this button to toggle them or in your window. Also, by default, you'll have something called the lagoon, which personally I don't use. I don't, um, no, I don't, I don't use that. So I get rid of that and this is pretty much my setup. To add other layers, we press the plus, we can add folders, you know, we can do all the usual stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide this, set my background color to um, blue for some reason. And on the left hand side here, this bar, this has pretty much most of your brushes. And this can be tweaked and changed and set up how you like it. So, as you can see, there are a lot of brushes on mine. I've got a lot of brushes on here. And I should probably organize or clean this at some point. They snipe at the time. All I tend to use is the... One sec, let me change this to something brighter. Um, all I tend to use is the pencil. The pen. And then the inking pen. And then, if I'm coloring, like a paintbrush or something like that. But... As well as that, we've also got a lot more options in here. You can install like free brush sets if you find a pro version, and there is like a whole host of stuff to play with. So many, so much stuff. And again, this is sort of another reason why I quite like this software because just out of like presets, there's a lot in here to play with to give you really nice, some sort of cool effects. From the get go without having to spend a lot of time creating custom brushes yourself and that's pretty much an overview of the brushes as well as from the brushes it's the canvas itself is very um easily to manipulate malleable something like that i'm using at the moment i've got like a touchscreen computer and all i've got is my two fingers and just like any other like phone software you can tweak it grab it move it so if you really want to zoom in you're doing some very small detail it is good for that so we can zoom in and then i can hide a little smiley face in here and then zoom out and go back to continuing i've been using these without really actually explaining those so let me explain what these are so this black one here this is your color you click in that and you can change your color. Easy as that. And then continue your painting ways. Or what you can do is you can actually press on it and slide down for a darker tone. Or press on it and slide upwards. Or left and right. And those are some sort of quick ways of changing the colors without actually having to click on it. And it's straight in. The opaque one is opaque for a reason because it tweaks your opacity so if I select a black pen if I slide up and down you can see it's no, if I slide left or right you can see it tweaks the size so if I slide right you get this really big pen slide and left obviously making it smaller and slide up or down for opacity so I'm sliding down right now 
and you can see how the opacity drops on that. So that's what I mean by it's quick, easy to use, and you've got pretty much all the tools right there on the surface view. Across the top, you've got a few more, and what I'm going to do is sort of dig into it a little bit more with some more sort of examples. I'm going to show you two of my favorite tools in here. Next, I'm going to show you two of my favorite tools. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to create. Um, uh, I don't. I don't know. Let's let's see what happens. Just create a, a sort of shape. I'm going to do a nice cartoony animal. So that's my basic shape. And what I'm going to do is drop the opacity on this layer a little bit. A new layer above it. Grab my inking pen. Make sure it's nice and it's a bit smaller than that. And I'm going to show you, like I say, two of my favorite tools on here. So the first one is this steady stroke. And if we press the steady stroke, what that does is if I turn it off and draw, try and draw a straight line slowly that's what that does if I use this one and try and draw a straight line slowly it creates a straight line slowly and that's pretty much the gist I'm going to do I'm just going to um, for sake of experiment draw order over my character This is a very weird looking critter. <laughs> but anyway, that was the steady stroke in action. What I'm going to do is hide that in a second. What I'm going to do next is use this predictive stroke. So the predictive stroke is a relatively new tool and it works in a similar way. So again, I'm just going to draw a straight line slowly. And it's taken sort of my first point, my end point, and try to like almost average it out where the key points would be. And it's created this really straight stroke for me, which is awesome. So let me hide this one and draw my character again. Oops. Cool, so that right there is my next character. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to move him to the right. Maybe scale him down just a little bit. And move my other one to the left. So the left one was my steady stroke. Let me turn you down a bit. And this is my predictive. Uh, 
how to do. And sort of like comparing and, com you know, comparing and looking at what we can immediately sort of see is there are a few differences. This one allowed me to create more complex shapes pretty quickly, as you can see around there. Whereas this one over here created just a circle. When I initially drew the complex shape, it drew it as a circle. That was a bad brush to use. Drew it as a circle. The initial shapes though themselves, right here, were a lot quicker to do. I think I drew, probably drew the predictive one in about half the time. And the shapes have actually come through really nice, whereas on here, we sort of have problems with dodgy edges, if that sort of makes sense. Where almost a bit of natural shapes, but it does look a bit more dynamic. And the eyeball as well, that was really hard to do. So the circles are really hard to do, steady stroke. Whereas the circular shapes, with predictive, work a lot faster. They just come out and it averages out, it's really good. I'm not really sure how the technology works maybe a little bit of magic, but really good. Creates a quick dynamic approach. So I'm going to show you a, another feature that I really like while comparing, again, the steady stroke to the, the other one. And that is this one here, Symmetry. Symmetry is a great tool. Symmetry is awesome. Let me give you a for example. Let me turn on my stage stroke and I'm going to draw some kind of video game controller. And what the symmetry has done it has allowed me to do half like a full drawing in half the time which is awesome look at that how much time did we save um so it's cool for symmetrical items like that but it's also got even more so if you wanted to do something crazy with let's say some a crazy type of flower you can quickly end up with like cool looking weird patterns pretty quickly obviously that sort of looks like madness but you get the idea, you get the picture. All right then, and sort of one more overview that I'd like to look at real quick is the preset tools up here. So I've got shapes. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a ball. I'm gonna drag my shape down. That'll do, it's not, I don't think it's, it's no, it's fine. And just like in, say, Photoshop and other things like that, you have various tools, like your paint bucket tool. So I'm going to double click in there to fill it up, fill my holes. And I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm going to use the airbrush. So with the airbrush, I'm just going to drag down a little bit and add a darker color. And so sort of start to color in the base of my circle. I'm going to do the same, a bit a bit darker this time, so I'll go a bit more around the bottom, and again, really adding to that, and then I'm going to use my prepare, bring my top tone up a bit, and a bit more.
cool. If I hide that, we can sort of see the coloring, what I've done there. Let me bring that back up. And I'm going to sort of apply a textured feeling to this. Which one shall I go for? Let's just go for this, for example. And what we've got here is we have blending modes as well, just like in the other software, in a lot of your competitive software. And blending modes are quite nice for you know, mixing things in. Just gives you sort of different effects. Cool, and that's my ball. But the problem is we have all this color around there which we don't want so again I'm going to go into my bottom layer and use a different tool so up here is my selection tool I'm going to go through we've got a whole different bunch of options obviously the easiest is the magic wand I'm going to select the outside space of my circle go up to my top layer and delete it And there we go, a quite nice, really dynamic ball. Let me merge these layers down together. It's a nice, unique, well-lit ball using some of the basic tools. We've also got the symmetry, which is cool, which definitely helps for drawings like that. We have a predictive and a steady stroke which, like I mentioned earlier, huge fan of the steady stroke, I mean the predictive stroke. It's really, like really good for creating really nice shapes. It works better with long shapes if you to do it to a small shape. It doesn't really do a very good job. Whereas if I were to do that same shit bigger, it would curve it out. And yeah, there you have it. That's pretty much sketchbook. One final point of this, if I wanted to, oops, find file and press save as. An important thing here is, okay, a cool thing here is the fact that we have PSD exporting. PSD exporting is awesome. You know, it's, um, it'll remember all your layers. It's very compatible with a lot of things because, you know, it's that Photoshop type of file. A lot of things use that. And that's really good for taking your work in, say, After Effects or any other product to take your work further. Okay, that is a sketchbook overview. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please. As usual, like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.